yell at me when I see him next time. <laughs> well, just don't you know, te- don't let him test you. Yeah. <laughs> or don't see him. He's my neighbor is the problem. <laughs> I see him every day walking his dog. Say, what's your blood pressure? Yeah, your, right. How's your blood? Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. We're just talking about health things. Um, we've got some things to pray about today. Uh, you know, I- I'm usually not... Um, discouraged by the news. Every once in a while I am. I'm usually not discouraged, but I'll, I'll tell you um, if uh, we see someone there. <laughs> we're, we're on. We're on, okay. I'll tell you that uh, today I think we should really pray. We should really pray for several things. Um, it's getting worse. Uh, you know, they had that little chop zone in Seattle. For, this is just an illustration. They had a little chop zone in Seattle, and and now two more kids got shot, a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old. And they're both black. They're, well, yeah, and the, and the two people, the, all the kids that got shot or that died are black. And these two kids were shot. Now, I don't know what a 14- and a 16-year-old kid are doing down there early in the morning. That's just not nuts. But, but you know, this thing's gotten out of control. And it's, got, it's getting out of control all over, not just in Seattle. And... Um, you know, high c- crimes are way up all over the country. When people think that there's no deterrent for their crime, they just they don't care. Right. And uh, and our police have got to be so demoralized, and it, it hurts my heart. Honestly, I feel sad um, because of of the way things are happening in our country. I know God has it under control. I'm just sad. <laughs> I know I don't I don't I still have hope. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't have hope. But I, I, I still believe that we really need to pray. We are the leaders in this. We need to pray. We need to stand up. I mean, it's really time. I mean, I, I'm even thinking, man, we should need to go out there and organize some marches for the police. <laughs> you know, we need to tell people we love our policemen and women, you know, and, and defunding police departments the way that people are talking about doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, New York City wants to take a billion dollars away from the police. One billion, with a B. And New York City's crime is up. Everybody, uh, there are people exiting New York like you wouldn't believe. People are going, we're not, we can't, we can't live here. We're out of here. Hmm. States like South Dakota, North Dakota are having a huge influx of people because people are going, we, you know. They want to take down um, the um, Mount Rushmore. I know. You know, look, we all have history. Listen to this. You have a person. This is how you should look at this. Well, I shouldn't say that. You can look at it any way you want. This is how I look at it. I have a personal history. I have some really ugly, nasty things in my personal history. But if I forget those things in my life, I'm not me anymore. I'm somebody else. I, if, besides, I can't forget them. They're a part of who I am. They're a part of, and God has used all those things to make me who I am today. It's not, like, it's not like we should believe that we don't have anything negative. I mean, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, it all goes back to the garden. Uh, yeah. My last name is German. It's Kaufman. means shopkeeper. So yeah. not a good history with the Germans. A couple yeah. of world wars. <laughs> yeah. So the bottom line is, the bottom line is, is if, we, if we're not careful, um, we're going to let things get out of control, and, and we can't. I think it's there right now. I yeah, don't know yeah, what the yeah, tipping point is. Yeah, I mean, of yeah course that's, it that's what worse. I mean. It's t- that's the t- yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're I think we're kind of getting close, don't you? Yeah, yeah. If if you know, and so we need strong leadership now to bring we, it back. We need strong leadership, and that's where the Christian stands up and says, "Look, this is my voice. You don't have to agree with me, but this is my voice. We cannot be silent. We cannot just stop living in America. We can't put our head in the sand and say." It's just going to be okay. It's going to go back to normal in a while. It's not. It, it, look, there's too many things, too many things that are coming together. It's a perfect storm. It's not going to be normal again. Uh, it, you know, I don't know if you heard today, but I was listening to the doctors uh, in uh, talking in Congress. Uh, they were the four. There were four doctors and four people ahead of the CDC and the FDA and Dr. Fauci and. And the, the the general who's in charge of the logistics, they were all they were all talking in front of Congress this morning, and I was watching that on the news. And there's there's a new strain of flying uh, swine flu. Oh, great! 
that's coming that 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 China has discovered and and kudos to China they gave it to the they they told the rest of the world about it but they've discovered a new strain of a new strain of swine flu in you remember when the swine flu epidemic happened? I think that was 2009 or something. It was just it was just a while ago. It was a huge problem for us. Now we have that on top of this. We don't know if it's coming or not. We don't, you know, we, all we know is that they've discovered its existence. So, and, and it, hasn't been, it hasn't been passed from animal to human. So we need to pray that it doesn't. But, you know, I mean, it feels like the end of the world. <laughs> You know, the more and more and more, because it's just, it's one thing on top of another. It just yeah. keeps, it just, it yeah. doesn't go away. It doesn't, usually when things like this happen, it's like a storm and we live through it and it goes back to some, some well, like a tornado and, it, yeah. and, and then it's all calm. Yeah, that's why I say it's kind of like a storm, yeah. right? But now it's like, it just doesn't stop. It just keeps piling one on the other. And that, that doesn't mean the inner world's coming, but I'm telling you, that means that the Christian voice should be loud and clear. And uh, I, my heart is sad because I, there's just so much nonsense going on in the world today. So anyway, I just want to pray for that. Plus, okay. our, our brother Walter, yeah, he's you know, Walter uh, C. Niles' husband. Um, he's in the hospital um, with some infection. I don't know. If I, I I don't think they would care if we told that and prayed for them. I think they're okay. Well, it's on the prayer chain. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's so what I mean. It's public I already. Yeah, I don't think they would care if we share that. Plus, there's some other things. Billy fell on his bike today. He wouldn't tell you that, but some trucker stopped and caused him to fall, and his his back is hurt. He, he's too modest to mention I'm, it, but I'm mentioning it because he's my friend. I want him to feel better. You asked me if I was tired. Today. Yeah. That's why I said. And yes, I fell. Yeah, yeah, he he wasn't complaining yeah. at all. I asked him, "Are you okay?" And he so he told me. Um, so we need to pray for Billy's back. He's had a back issue for a while. We just you know mm -hmm. some oh, years, sorry. some yeah. years. So we need to pray for him to be, feel better. Uh, we need to pray for um, our children. We need, I mean, maybe we should just pray today. I mean, you know, we should just seek the Lord today. And we can. We can do that. If you have anything you want us to pray for, put it up. We'll find it. We'll read it. We'll pray for you. Um, you know, that, that's a huge part of, of what we need to do as our voice. We need to raise our voice to Christ for one another. We, we love one another. We're, we're, we're a family. I mean, you can't get any better family than the family of God. We're family. Right. And so we need to do that. Um, so we need to pray for those things as well. Uh, there's, uh, there, you know, there, there's people who are struggling in their marriage. We need to pray for them. There are people who are who are praying for their children. We need to pray for them. Uh, you know, th there's just a lot of things that come finances. across our desk. Yeah, my desk and finances. People struggling with things, and we need to pray for those people as well. So anyway, I just, I'm just uh, hoping that 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 you have hope in Christ. Trust Christ. You can feel sad about the things that are going on, but don't stay there. We're not going to stay. We're not going to stay in the state in the state of sad. We're moving to a different state, the state of Jesus, because mm -hmm. we're supposed to rejoice in Christ, even in the tough stuff. And we can with Him. We can. So anyway, and we need to pray for my friend Connie. Uh, she's in the last stages of her cancer, and I could talk to her husband the other day. I can hardly talk to them. They don't. They're not on here, so I can say this, but I can hardly talk to them because I'm I'm broken hearted. I just love those people, and it just you know. So it's hard to talk to them on the phone. They, they called the other day and asked if I would uh, officiate the funeral. And man, was that hard to talk to them about. But yeah, so I said, sure. I would love, you know, love to be any of a service to them if I can. So anyway, but you know, we all have, we all have things in our lives. So we should, uh, if you want us to pray for them, please send them in. We will be glad to pray for them. So Father, we thank you today. We, uh, we thank you that you are still in control. We know that you have not abdicated your throne. We know that you have not moved away from your throne or stepped down from authority. We, we, as we're reading the this, this scripture, Lord, and, and uh, in Matthew, we understand daily, daily we understand the authority of Christ. And we know his authority reigns supreme because we have been given the assurance of his resurrection the resurrection power. We pray, Father, for the blood of Jesus, the resurrection power to come upon us even as we pray, to be with us even as we voice these concerns, to, to lead and guide and teach us to pray even as we're involved in this act of praying. We pray, Father, that you do that, that you lead us in a very special way this morning as we pray together. We thank you, Lord God, that you are an awesome God. 
first. We want to start there. Thank you, Lord. Hallowed be thy name. Lord, we want to keep your name holy. We want to lift you up. We want to thank you, God, for all that you are and all that you have been to us personally and to us as, as we read through your word, to us as a human race. We thank you, Father, for taking care of us, for taking care of every single thing and every single need that, that has been there in our life personally. We thank you for for bringing your son Jesus, Father, to, to be my sacrifice, to take my place on the cross, to forgive my sin, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I thank you, Father, that it, it's so personal, and I'm grateful, so grateful to you, Father. And I pray, Father, now that I pray for the things that, that we need. I pray for our country. I pray for our president. I pray for our Congress, uh, the Senate and the House. I pray, Lord Jesus, for for all of those things for governors for mayors i pray father that we would uh, pray against this coronavirus collectively that we would pray against this coronavirus in the name of jesus we pray that it would go away but lord whatever you're going to do with this virus whatever whatever you're going to use this for lord god i pray that we would get this lesson and get it soon i pray father against the swine flu that we heard about today lord we just can't I just pray that there's not another thing upon another thing upon another thing I pray against the power of Satan in Jesus name that Satan has no power uh, with when it comes to to fighting Jesus I pray against his power in Jesus name I pray against his influence in Jesus name I pray against the influence of demons in Jesus name we just thank you God for taking care of us today we thank you for ministering to us we thank you for taking care of our country we pray for Walter and we pray for the other people that are our hearts and minds for Connie we pray for all these people Lord Jesus that that need your healing touch we pray that you would heal them in Jesus name Jesus you bring authority you just speak a word and things change and I thank you God for that and I thank you Lord God that you would speak a word just speak a word Lord God whatever that word is just speak a word we I don't even I'm not even smart enough to know what word you should speak but I know you know so just speak a word maybe as simple as go whatever it is it may but father I pray that you would rebuke the wind and the wave of the chaos in our country around the world I pray God that you would just bless this country I pray for you to be with people who are so fatigued and so overwhelmed with the things that we see every day I pray God that you would just come in a very special way and minister to us today as we trust you help us to trust you to act on our behalf oh Lord I could just I just want to tell you that we love you and that can we just tell you that we love you and we surrender to you and we submit to you and we trust you we trust you in Jesus name we trust you Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you in your precious name, Jesus. I feel like I could pray all day, but Lord, I, I just I just pray, Father, that you would hear our prayer today, hear Billy's prayer in a moment. Lord, just we just thank you, Jesus, in your precious name. <clears throat> yes, Lord, thank you. We lift up your name today, Lord. Be the yes, Lord of our Jesus. lives. Be the Lord of, um, as we open your word, be the Lord of this, uh, these 45 minutes we have this hour. Um, Touch the people who are listening. Touch us, Lord. We all need you, and uh, and our world needs you. And Lord, whether um, you come now or not, Lord, we we want to trust you. We want to rejoice in you, um, not in our circumstances, Lord, but in because of who you are. So we we come to you humbly. We come to you knowing that we have nothing to give, and we just want to receive from you today, Lord. We want to give the day to you and our time to you the best way we can, Lord. Help us to do that because we can't even do that without your help. Amen. And I just uh, pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, bless this word as we read it today. Give us great understanding, Lord. So, <laughs> the best things you can do. Now they're saying, wear a mask in public. If you can't be six feet apart, so please wear a mask in public. Get some of the sanitizer and put it on all the time. And there's a, We each have a little bottle. <laughs> so, we're going we're gonna to practice. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna walk the walk. We're gonna walk the walk. Uh, you know what? I, this is gonna sound funny, but I'm, I'm, I want you to pray for something. Pray that you will soon see our president wearing a mask, so that everybody will leave him alone. Oh, you have a cut, and that's you just right, put that. Oh, hallelujah! 
<laughs> yeah. Pray that you'll see our president. He, you know, look, can I tell you why President Trump doesn't wear a mask? Everybody's worried about this. It's so stupid. Everything's mess so, up his hair? So, yeah, <laughs> everything's so political. Look, he gets tested all the time. They don't let anybody around him that's not tested. He knows. He's, he's way more than six feet away from anybody that would ever have a virus. The, 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 the news people that see him, they don't get close to him unless they're tested. Every, and they all know it, Every, but they still ask him questions about it. Everybody around him is tested all the time. So they know that he's safe. Otherwise, other, otherwise he would put on a mask. I'm just telling you, that's why he doesn't wear a mask. He doesn't say that, but that's what's going on. So just, but, but people want him to wear a mask. So, you know, we just pray for him to put that on and put that baby to bed and just, you know, sometimes it's, it's okay just to- Joe, but why does Joe Biden wear a mask? Oh, I, that's, <laughs> you know what, I'm not, that's, that's that, no, no, but that's the stupidest thing. Uh, whatever, okay. I, I, some, sometimes people can go overboard <laughs> too, <laughs> it, but but what you have is both extremes in your face. That's yeah. what you have right there, oh, yeah. and you have proud men who <laughs> who don't want to don't want to give in to anything. That's what you have on both sides. Yep. You know, all those guys are so full of themselves. <laughs> both of them are. I'm, I'm just telling you, they are. <laughs> Uh, anyway, whatever. Just pray for them. <laughs> All right. Well, we were with the we were with the demon possessed folks a little bit yesterday, and uh, the, the end Sunday. Yes. And, and then the uh, the paralytic. And the paralytic. Yeah. He forgave his sins. Yeah. So we were we were talking about the difference between healing and sins and mm -hmm. and Billy. For the connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I had a I had a I had a conversation with Niall yesterday. She came in. She's, you know, she works in the office and she came and she said, is all, is all sickness caused by sin? And I said, well, it's not a yes or no answer. And she, she said, okay. I said, it's both and, and this is what I believe. We wouldn't have sickness and illness and disease if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned. Sin brought that into the world. Yeah, original sin. Original sin brought that into the world. Um, so we're born into an environment of disease because of sin. So yes, it's caused by sin in that respect. Is every specific illness caused by sin? No, but we've been born into, we've been born into a community that is sinful. So we're predisposed. We're predisposed. To sin. Yes. Well, we're actually sinners, but we're predisposed to, to the illnesses. illnesses. Yeah, to disease. But there's certain illnesses, like, I'm, I don't. I don't even like alcohol, so I don't drink. But if I did, if I did drink and I wrecked my liver, there's a cause effect there, right? Well, that's what we. But talked I could about. wreck my liver without drinking, I guess, right. with well, sugar or something. Well, yeah, so. we talked about you, and you brought it up. You brought up the HIV thing. In fact, yeah. it was because of what we talked about yes. yesterday that right. she asked the question. So, right. you know, but you brought it, well, HIV is not just caused by homosexual interaction. It's caused by intervening, you know, needles, you know, yeah. needles and all kinds of stuff. HIV was caused by. It wasn't just that, but so some people, some religious, very religious people. I don't even know if they're Christians. Or not. They, I hope they are. I mean, you know, I want everybody to be a Christian. So some religious people would say, well, it, because of this homosexual activity, this is what happened, HIV happened. Well, people didn't like that, and they got really in trouble for that, and people didn't want to say that because right. it was not politically correct, and it was, it was thought to be mean and nasty, and it was thought to be an uh, ancient conversation that had no relative... Uh, no relative information or relative voice in our day today. It was it was backwoods, you know, lose your teeth kind of mm -hmm. thought process. It was that you were an idiot if you thought that. Well, the reality is is that certain things have caused certain diseases, and you can try to minimize that as much as you want, but it, the truth is still the truth. And that's what we have to do today. We have to stand up for the truth. I'm not saying that it's a curse on people. Yeah, God's not, I'm not uh, saying punishing that. people with, yes. with a, disease. Right, right. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's a curse on people. Then that's what people were saying. I don't mm -hmm. believe that. I don't think it's a curse on people. Look, if there were ever a curse on any nation for anything, it would be on this nation, and I want to tell you why. Because we kill so many babies. 
we abort so many babies. That's, that would bring a curse. If, 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 you, if you think there should be a curse any, for any reason, that's my opinion, and people will think I'm backward for that. But you know what? Let them think that. I don't care. I am I'm adamantly against abortion. I think as every Christian should be. I, yeah, well, that I am, and I I teach that, and people get upset with me about it. But I am. I'm not going to lie about that just to be politically correct or have to have somebody like me. I, I'm not doing that. I'm just not. So, you know, and and I would be the first one to stand up and say that. You know, if God so. were punishing people for their sins, none of us would stand right now. We would right. Everyone right. would be dead. All of sin. What um, yeah. we're in an age of grace, and God's wrath has been satisfied on the cross, not the one behind me, but on the cross right. with Jesus. Right. So that's over. Right. And now the only thing that you, we, we, that I can be sure of, or anyone can be sure of, that that's from God is He's calling us to Christ. Right. That for sure. Right. He's calling us to Christ. Everything else we can look at Scripture and we, we can decide God's motive or whatever. Today He's going to say He desires mercy, not sacrifice. We know right. He wants us to forgive people. Right. He wants us to humble ourselves. Right. Um, he wants us to be under his authority and submit. Yes, right. yes, yes, and yes. But yeah. punishing? No, yeah. he's not punishing anybody. He, he, yeah, he's. It, but, but. But the, you have sin. This is this is why it happens, because we have Adam and Eve sin. Now I know that some people aren't going to agree with this. I don't really care. Well, uh, this is biblically. This is a biblical, a strong biblical theology that you can believe in if you want to believe the Bible. We were born into sin. It's called original sin theologically. We were born into sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Those are two kinds of sin. One is the state of sin. You're born into sin. One, are, one is the acts of sin, the sins that you commit. All of us commit sin, and all of us are born into sin. It's just it's because of Adam and Eve. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what we believe. Now, because that sin, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Well, disease causes death. Yes. Sickness came into the world through the sin of Adam. Adam was not intended to die. No, there's no, there's nothing in scripture that tells us that there was going to be death until sin. And in fact, didn't God tell Adam, don't eat from that tree, you'll you're surely die. Yeah, right. I thought, oh, I don't know what that means, you yeah. know, but yeah. he, he yeah. did, he did surely die. Yeah, so that's perfect. So the, the bottom line is, is that yes, sin happens, be, I mean, sickness happens or disease happens because of sin but not your specific disease because of a sin that you have in your life, except if you've done something to cause your body, like, you know, you're drinking and your liver goes away. I mean, yes, yeah. or or smoke. there's smoking and you cause, yeah. I mean, okay. there's things that we can do, overeat, like, you know, like me, and I now I have to wrestle with my, with my, my uh, physician. I, I love my But physician. you mentioned, you say, you know, yeah. Adam and Eve, original sin. Right. If you believe that, right. okay, well, fine, I'm gonna just, Say on that, yeah. you can have God, you can have the Bible without God, you can have right. prayer without God, you can have church without God, right. but you can't have God without the Bible. That's Sorry. True. Sorry. If you yeah. say you believe in God, yeah. the God of the Bible, you have to have right. the Bible. He, right. he requires it. Well, yeah, the only reason I say if you believe is because I'm not here to tell you what to believe. Well, I'm I here agree, to, but, yeah. but I, if we're talking to Christians and saying, yeah. well, I think abortion's yeah. okay. <laughs> it's I, not. <laughs> it's not. Read now, the Bible a little more carefully. Yeah, it, now, this is the bottom line is. Now, I've, had, I've ministered to many people that have a, had, had an abortion. Now, look. God loves you. Oh, if, yeah. He, you forgives, know, he the forgives abortion. Of course, you. Of course. Of course. You know, God takes care of. He's the solution to every problem. Please don't feel like God. Don't don't carry the guilt of if that's in your life, or if you're a guy and you something happened when you were younger or whatever, and you mm -hmm. you, you said away. go do yeah. this, you yes. know, and and you paid for whatever, and now you're feeling guilty. Well, okay, then just take that to the Lord. He will forgive you, but. If we had a if we had an honest conversation about that topic, and maybe someday we will, just just do me a favor, go start go Google the the history of of who started that, who, who started I, I know that yeah the, the history of who started Planned Parenthood and why and all that stuff. You want to talk about racism? Yeah. It, it's 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 a known fact, but nobody will talk about it. But even if it yeah. weren't abortion, yeah. who can stand? Look, yeah. Yeah. God's right. mercy. God has mercy on everything we've ever done. But it doesn't mean what we do is right. And right. so now I'll do it again. That's right. that's in read Romans if you want to right. see that. I'll just right. keep sitting. That's good. No, that's don't good. keep sitting. The sin is bad. The mercy is wonderful. So yeah. if you had an abortion or you prayed for it. 
paid for it or whatever, mercy, God's mercy is on yeah, you. Yeah. But don't then stand and say, well, they're fine. Abortion's fine. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do have a biblical truth. Go and sin no more. We're te- we're te- <laughs> yeah, go and sin no more. We're teaching biblical truths. Yeah. And if you don't have the Bible, you need the Bible. Right, right. If you know the Lord, you can't say, I know the Lord, and you don't. You say, I've dismissed the Bible. You yeah. can't do I don't think you can do that. I, I, I agree with this. One of the reasons that Billy and I get along so well, to be honest, is that we don't always agree. And you hear us banter back right. and forth on things. Right. But this, we are like that on. That you cannot, you won't separate Billy and I on this conversation. Yeah. Uh, we believe that what this Bible says is true, and we believe this is the only authority. The only authority, the only truth comes from here. Doesn't come from anywhere else. And we're not going to add or subtract yeah. to it. And so Jesus, yeah. this is called the Word of or God. Or run away from it. This is called the Word of God. We were just yeah. teaching our, yeah. Luann was teaching our granddaughter. Yeah. Um, a scripture I've hidden your word in my heart. She goes, you know what the word is? She goes, no. She says, well, the word is the Bible. God gave us His word, yeah. and Jesus is called the word. It's right. Inseparable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus, Jesus is the one who spoke the word into existence <laughs> through men, through the power of the Holy Spirit. The, the Old Testament comes through Christ, through the through the Father, through Christ, through the Spirit of God. And it says that you are yeah. saved by the washing of the Word. Right. So if you want more peace in your life, if you want right. more hope, right. re- get more Word. And, and, and so maybe, you know, we don't like to do topical studies, but maybe someday we'll do a topical study about the Word of God and just show, open it up and just show you what the Bible says about, about itself. About the Bible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it's amazing. There's a lot of stuff. Well, we do a lot of that anyway. Because yeah. right. Well, that's true. It, it taught, right. We we can't. You can't just take one scripture and say, "I live my life by this." Right. It has to be backed up by. The Bible does not it, contradict itself. The Bible is his best commentary. Yes. If you want to know a commentary to read, read the Bible. <laughs> it's the best commentary on itself. And usually right. when people go wrong with the Bible is they've just read two or three spots and they don't read the whole thing. You have to study all of it in and order. And deeply the way you do. You yeah, can't yeah, just yeah. say, we'll just run through the Beatitudes. Yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, don't yeah, run yeah. through the Beatitudes. Yeah, you have, to, you have to pull it apart. You have to unpack it. You have to just get say, look, what's in here? You know, it's like it's like a gift. It's like, you know, it's like it's a box with all this tissue on it. You're just pulling all these things out and, you, and, it's, and, it's, and each one of those tissues is important. So you can pull them all out. And you know, Anyway, whatever. Do you, know, you remember the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah, Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who's a smarter person, the Jeopardy person or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The Jeopardy by far. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and teachers know this, is this very shallow pool of, do you know a little bit about this? The, the questions in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire are very easy for experts, yeah. but for everyone else, it's like, uh, I think it's Babe Ruth. Jeopardy, though, <laughs> yeah, is right? deep, yeah. deep. It's a category that goes deeper, deeper, deeper. Study the Bible like Jeopardy. Yeah. Don't just do the surface thing like, for God so loved the world, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord is my shepherd. Great yeah. scriptures, but go deeper yeah. instead of just shallow and say, I know some scripture, yeah. you know, hallowed be thy name. And don't think you can't do it either. Because oh, remember it's the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, John 14, 26. We, we studied that in, on, the, on, on Facebook Live. It says... It says um, that God will teach you all things. Talking about the Holy Spirit, He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. John fourteen twenty six. So you need to know that it's it's the Holy Spirit will teach you. That's why you'll often hear me even when I pray. Lord, teach me to pray. I'm a Holy Spirit. Yes. Teach me to pray because I want to pray what He wants me to pray. And and I'm yeah. not selling it. But by the way, I'm not selling the Bible. I'll, I'll take Jesus and the Holy Spirit over the Bible. Yeah. But I, but my question would be. Yeah. If you, if you love the Lord, you have mercy, you're forgiving people, you're praying, and why aren't you reading your Bible? This happened to me. Yeah. I was not baptized. Well, early on, they said, be baptized. I said, mm, why? What's that? What's yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And they couldn't explain to me. They said, well, it's a, it's a what's it called, an ordinance or whatever. So they threw yeah. this at me. Why wouldn't you be baptized if you love Jesus? And I said, don't have a good answer. <laughs> so I would say the same to you. If you love the Lord yeah. and, and he fills your heart, why wouldn't you read his word? Right, right. But you don't have to. It's not yeah. like it's, this is not going to save you. Only the Holy Spirit. We wish, honestly, not, not for our ego, and I really mean that, we wish that there were thousands of people watching this because we believe that we're teaching the word and we want to disciple as many people as we can. Yes. So we want people, especially the people at Lost Palms Community Church, we want you to get the word. That's why we haven't stopped doing this. We had planned in the very beginning just to do it for a couple, you know, for a couple weeks and maybe back off a little bit. Right. But we've decided not to because we have anywhere from 50 to 100. Well, actually, the Holy Spirit, it's not yeah, us. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, when, yeah. when Rick says Jesus is the answer to everything, it's like, yeah. who are you to say that? Yeah. The Bible, Bible says, says it. Yeah. So you... 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't have an original thought. Everything, <laughs> uh, hopefully, all my thoughts come from the Word. That's where I want them to you come from. You only have original sin, but not original I have original sin. You don't even sin. have that anymore. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> Jesus washed me clean of that, right? But, still, but no original but I was, But I had it. <laughs> I had that disease. You know, <laughs> if you want to know the greatest disease of all mankind, it's sin. That's, the, that's really the truth. That's the biggest disease. Anyway, so we've kind of gone around let's, the, let's get the Bible. Yeah, we're let's, let's, we're talking about the Bible. Let's get there and see what it says. Just trying to see the comments. I can't yeah, see do we have any comments that yeah. we need to look at? There, uh, nothing, it, it's all fine. Okay. No, no, questions. no questions. All right, so we are If at, you have uh, questions, <clears throat> bring them up, we'll answer them. Matthew, the tax collector, this right. is Matthew 9-9. Nine, nine. Yep. 9-9, nine, nine. so this is Matthew writing about himself. <laughs> yeah. In the third person. You want me to read it? Yeah, sure. Okay, and we'll just do the 9 to 13. Okay. As Jesus passed on from there, so he left where there, he was in Capernaum. He got. Right. Oh, yeah, he, he, he went away from those people who sent him away right. in Gad. Right. And then he meets a, uh, he, he, oh, he says, uh, the he, paralytic, your sin's forgiven. Right. Yeah, so and he's then, at home. He's right, at he's, home. he's at home. And then yeah. they marvel, yeah. and he, so he passes on from there. As right. he passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Wow, you know, this is a this is a great big scripture. <laughs> it, it it feels like just a story, but in the beginning, this is a this I love this because here's Matthew. You're right; he's talking about himself. So Matthew would really know this. He was there. <laughs> he it was when he was called. Yeah, he's. This it, is his personal testimony. This is his personal testimony, and I love this. Thank you. That's a great way to say it. I love this because. He tells you a, a few details that are really, really fun to, to get into. As Jesus went on uh, from there, again, he was in Capernaum. He, he just had healed the, the guy on the mat, and he had just, he had just remember, he just had revealed himself as God. Matthew, but Matthew wasn't with them there, right? This is the, the Matthew isn't there, but Jesus, just, Jesus was just telling the crowd he was God. By, by giving the comment, is it easier to forgive sins or to heal a person? Which one is easier? The only person that could forgive sins was God, and they believed the only person that could really heal somebody was God. So they, the people that were watching that said, this must be God. I mean, that's, that was his message. He's starting to open up that conversation about who he is to the general public. Because he could have healed without throwing the forgiveness in he there. He didn't have to say It wouldn't have bothered that. the Pharisees. Right. You know, but when he said, your sins are forgiven... He's saying, guess who I am? Yeah, they know? just would have been jealous. Yes, if, that, wow, amazing yeah, healing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They just would have been jealous. But now, now they're angry. They're, now they're upset because he has proclaimed himself to be God, and that's why, they, that's why they say in what we read, well, he's blaspheming. He's claiming to be God. That's what they were saying. So now he, he walks away from that, and that's what it says as Jesus went from there. So he's, he's walking away from that house where the paralytic guy was, and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Well, you know, if you watch The, the yeah, Chosen. Was, that's how they show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. It, I think it depicts it. It's fun to watch that. Well, he, yeah. it's like healing a guy on the Sabbath in the temple. He, yeah. Why are you picking a tax collector? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of other Jews you could have picked. Yeah. Well, Jesus has a point yeah. why he's picking a tax collector. Yeah. So, tell us about this tax collector. Well, tax collector, we think tax collectors are the IRS, and we don't like them much. But this is different. Especially this when is you a, get a letter from them. This, this, Matthew's real name is Levi. He's, a, he's from the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. But Matthew is so humble here that he, Matthew's the name Jesus gave him. And he doesn't say there's a man named Levi sitting there. He actually says he uses his disciple name right. as the disciple. So that's kind of good. He's, he, Matthew's looking forward instead of looking back. But... Um, a tax collector was a Jew who was a turncoat, a, a right. snitch. He was not only collecting uh, for, for the Romans, but he was keeping, get to keep some for himself. Right. And he was living a rich lifestyle right. while the other Jews were under oppression. Right. So the tax collector's house is probably Matthew's. Right. Who else? He, no Jew would eat with Matthew. Right. No right. Jew yeah. would eat with Matthew. Well, this is, let's say that you owed the, the 10 bucks. Well, Matthew would charge you 15 bucks. Yes. And he would keep $5 for himself, 
and give the 10 bucks to the government and he was scamming and the more and that's why they didn't like tax collectors because they were Jews they chose Jews to collect taxes from Jews and so and so this guy was a Jew taking advantage of his own people he was justifying his sin like you said yesterday yeah. about that person because he was saying well I got to make money yeah and yeah, so yeah. I'm still a Jew right he was a he was worse than a leper he was an outcast yeah people did not like him at all they're walking the other side of the street he would yeah. won't talk to him so, so he lived a very lonely life, to be honest. He hung out with other tax collectors. <laughs> yeah, but who I bet, they called sinners. Yeah, yeah, I be, and, I, and I'll bet you he didn't have many friends. If you watch the Chosen, he's he, hiding. He, he, oh. he has to pay a cab driver, or whatever, to hide so people don't beat him up. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a, he's being pulled in a cart, <laughs> you know, and and he gets and guess who cover. wants to beat him up? Peter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jesus brings together Peter and Matthew and says. Get used to now, it. Now that's in the chosen. That's in the. We're but I mean, we know that, pe that, that we know that the they disciples. Yeah. yeah, there were fishermen and yeah. tax collectors. Yeah, there were uh, rich guys like John and, and uh, the Zebedees, and it's like uh, we think about this at church. Rick and I. Well, you know, think about church. We're with people we normally would not be with that have brought right. together a different cultures. This is what the world needs. Right. This is not Chaz. Oh, this is man, a culture. That's a perfect illustration. Because uh, 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 yeah. that's what Jesus did. He brought together twelve men. And they're all Jews, but they did social, the way they thought, their intelligence, they were not the same at all. They were so different. And Matthew and Peter in particular. And that's not just for the chosen. I think that's true. Matthew and Peter. Were... Well, yeah, Peter was, Peter was at odds with everybody, though. I mean, he, <laughs> okay, was, he, was, yeah. just, he was just he was a, a hothead. Head, yeah. yeah, he was a hothead. In the Bible, it says, I mean, it but tells he, us. he didn't like, like Matthew. No. He, he couldn't have liked Matthew. Well, nobody did, right? So we know that, right? We know that he was lonely. We know that, it, and I think that's tr probably true. But this, but I think what, what what Billy brought up, the conversation about changing his name, I think is really important. I think it's a really important thing because his name was Levi, and he now he calls himself Matthew because that is the name that Christ gave him. Right. And because he gave him that name, Matthew uh, Matthew did not want to go back to Levi. Yeah. That's a good point. Matthew didn't want to go back. But it should read Levi's. like this. As Jesus passed, he saw a man named Levi sitting right. at the tax right. office. He said, follow me, Matthew. Right. Right. It should yeah. be like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, it should be. But, but Matthew won't even mention the name right. Levi. It's like, it's like us. I don't want to... I don't want to go back to the old person. The old creature, the old I, man. I don't even... Yeah, and Jesus, Jesus literally changes your name. I mean, I mean, literally, in a spiritual sense, he changes your name. He really does. The Bible says that you now you're dead in Christ, and you're and now you're alive in Christ. You're yeah, both. Dead. Oh, okay. You're, you're, yeah. you're dead in Christ because you're not physically dead, but you're really? dead in Christ. But and you're alive in Christ. You die to self, and you're alive in Christ. You are a new creature. The Bible says you are literally changed. And I think that name that Matthew calls himself is about Matthew understanding later while yes. he's reading uh, while he's writing this yes later he understands as he's becoming more mature as a believer in jesus because now jesus is gone jesus has been ascended and now this this all, all these are written after yeah, jesus has ascended so jesus has gone from the earth as jesus he's here in the presence of the holy spirit but he's he's not in the form of christ anymore. well we were enemies of god yeah. right yes absolutely. so you could look at it this way so rick enemy of god and jesus um covers him in his blood and saves him. And he introduces Rick to God and saying, this is now, this is not the Rick who in the womb who was created right, right. and named by his parents. This is now whoever your new name is. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. now you're being introduced to God in, in Christ. You have to be in Christ. And it wasn't that God didn't know me because True. God always knew me, but God now knows me differently. Yeah, we're now being, yeah. you went from being. So that's good. You, that's be, good. you went to become a child of God to a son or, well, uh, I was I wasn't was a, a child of God. I was a creation. I was okay, created in His image, but now I become a son. Yeah. Now you now you're, you're adopted, yeah. and He's now yeah, we're now, now related to God. Yeah. Now I'm in His family. So actually, we get His last name, whatever that is. Yeah. So look yeah. at it that way. Yeah. We don't know what His last name is. We're not even yeah. sure what His first name is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll find out someday. Um, anyway, so there's Matthew, and Matthew is a completely changed, transformed individual from when he was cheating the people as a tax collector. He, you know, he was he was dishonest. He was he he didn't care about people. Oh, look at this. Uh, What's Ma that? Matthew means gift of Jehovah in the Greek. No, it it does. So he changed his name. Um, Jesus changed his name to gift of God. No, gift I know God. that because I oh, named I my know. son Matthew. Oh. That's why I named him because he's my gift from God. You got no. He was adopted without yes. a name then. No, he had another name. His and you name, changed it. Yeah, his name was well. That well, that's a good. That could be the illustration. That. Oh. Yeah, when Matthew was born, he knows this. When Matthew was born, he was born Aries. I didn't know. You, oh. 
Yeah, not right. good. But yeah. I didn't know yeah. when you, you know went, what Aries is. But right? I knew you. You yeah, it's a hor- yeah. Hor- hor- horoscope. It's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you, but it's a Greek god. What? Oh, that. Oh, that Aries. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Aries. The yeah, 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 in this horoscope. Yeah. But um, when you adopt a child that was a baby, they already have a name then because they all have names. But what happens when you adopt? This is this is cool. Now this this is really this really this relates. relates sure. Okay, then big time. Every one of my children is adopted, and I'm thankful. But this is the cool thing. When they're adopted, they come with a birth certificate before you adopt them. When, when they become adopted, your na- my name is now, uh, the names on his original birth certificate are completely erased. Now I'm the father, and Shelley's the, the mother, and Matthew is his new name, and that appears there. None of the old stuff even appears. Hmm. You can't even find it. I never even thought about that, that you, yeah. you change when you adopt yeah. a child. You- yeah. But not like a six-year-old or something. No, yeah. If you if you want to, you, you can, can give them the a new name because they because now you're you're the person that's the parent on the birth well, certificate. Well, that's a very god thing. Then that's a very god thing because he adopts us into his family. Yeah, and so you get so it's just like this. Matthew had Levi, now he's Matthew. Well, I named my son Matthew because I he was a gift from God, and I and also so of course you knew that. Yeah, and so I also named my my daughter Madison. Because it's the female version of Matthew. She's a gift from God. And we named Lucas Luke because we didn't have any more Matthews to name. <laughs> and your next kid would have been John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe. <laughs> but 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 yet but so I get this. I for me this adoption thing is really, really when I'm adopted into the family of God, the, the we again, we adopted three children. And and every time we went before the same judge and we had the same attorney. And it costs to do this, right? So we adopt these kids. And, and the judge and the attorney goes, oh, yeah, you're the one. And I said, what? They said, yeah, you're the one who cries when you adopt kids. <laughs> you're the one who's bawling. I said, yeah, I'm the one. Because, it, because that's what God did for me. He adopted me. He changed my name just like I changed their name. He, he's on my birth certificate as my father. Ah, that's that's whew, that's a big deal. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. Name I didn't know Matthew. bringing up Levi there would be that. Yeah, good. it's a big deal, oh, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad yeah, I brought yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> anyway, and then, and, but this is what he says. It's it's amazing to me how few words Jesus uses and how many words we use. <laughs> he makes it really simple. That's true. Talking to demons, go. He spoke a word to the wind and the waves. When he when he tells Matthew to follow him, he just he doesn't he says follow me. Now this is Matthew's testimony, so I would imagine if it were much more than this, Matthew would have recorded it. Yeah, this is Matthew's testimony, so he's saying, "Come follow me." Jesus, again, where does that lead us with somebody who could speak so few words and have so much authority? I have a friend of mine who. Um is not saved, has a religion, but doesn't do anything about it. And we had the conversation about this. He says, yeah, I wonder, I'd like to see, why did all these guys just follow Jesus when he said, follow me? And that's a good question. It's something you should investigate, you know? Yeah. Because he wants to be convinced of things. We know it as we're reading through here. We know it as the authority that Jesus commanded. Yeah. He compels you. He's the hound of whatever you say. The Holy Spirit. He chases after us. And we want him. We just don't know we want him. Right. And there are people that Christ is saying today, follow me. And you're saying, no, yeah. your, your flesh is very strong. For your... Well, this is, this is in, in the rear view mirror, 2020 is, is good vision, right? Well, hindsight is 2020, right? We can always see things much clearer after they've already happened. <laughs> We're just looking at, the, looking at what took place. This follow me is really important because... Not only did it bring us Matthew in, as a disciple, but and it not only does it show the authority of Christ, and it does do that, but it shows us when we're changed, when we get a new name, when we're changed, I think that we need to, you need to realize the authority of Christ in your life. I need to realize the authority of Christ in my life. It is a huge thing. And we, this, this to me convicts me to do what God's calling me to do because he has changed my name. 
He's changed everything about me. You know, he's, it's amazing who God is in my life. It's amazing who God is in your life. So, so our, our response to Christ should always be yes. I, I, there's a lady named Heidi Baker. Do you, do you know that I name? I think I've heard that. Yeah. Name. Heidi Baker is, uh, it has a PhD uh, from, I think, Cambridge or someplace. So she's a real smart lady. Um, she is one of the people that some people have a difficulty with because she's, <laughs> she walks in the authority of Christ. And when you walk in the authority of Christ, people have a problem with you. But let me tell you how, how impressive Heidi Baker is. Heidi Baker, a long time ago, told God she would only say yes when he said, do something. And I, and I thought about that so much in my life, because I don't. I'm just going to be honest. I don't always say yes. I don't know. I think I'm like most Christians who, oh, yeah. who don't <clears throat> always say yes. But let me tell you what Heidi's done with her life. Heidi has 80,000 orphans in Mozambique. She goes to the dumps in Mozambique. She has a PhD, she didn't have to do this. She has a PhD and she goes, she, she had, brings all these orphans into all these places. She meets with the president of Mozambique. She, she meets with presidents all over the world. She, it, she, prays, she prays six hours every day so that she can hear the voice of God. She goes into villages that are Muslim villages. You want to, I, this is what I'm talking about. When you walk with the authority of Christ, when, when Jesus says, follow me, and you say yes to him, he'll open up all kinds of doors. That's why I think this is important. L listen to this. There was, a, there was a Muslim village that she had some missionaries that, that were under her ministry, and she sent them up to northern Africa to, to a Muslim village. And she said, go up there and just, just minister to these people. She goes up there, she's up there for, they're up there, excuse me, for three years. They come back, say, we can't, we can't make a headway with any of them. She tells her husband, somebody gave them a brand new plane for good. I mean, they, they get million dollar contributions all the time. Why? Because she's doing ministry and God's blessing her, that's why. Anyway, so they fly the plane, her husband flies her up, Roland flies her up. They go up to this village and they're in this village. They land and everybody's, all these people, you know, they don't see planes very much, especially landing in their, in their midst, you know, so it's a small plane. So they get out. She, she asks, it's all a Muslim village and they got, they have lots of spiritual warfare going on there. And she asks to see the person in charge, the chief of the village. And so she goes to the chief and she, she humbly says, sir, God has sent me here. Do you have people in your village that cannot hear? And they, she, they said, yeah, we got. And so they brought, a, I don't know, half a dozen people up to her. And she said, okay. She said, I'm going to have your children pray for them in the name of Jesus. So she takes these little Muslim kids. They put hands on these people that can't hear. And she tells them what to pray. Now, I want you to know the prayer she said, Lord. And they repeated that, Jesus, please let these people hear. That's it. No big deal. No, no hoopla. No, you know. Right. The all of these. Now look, if they, if not, if one of them didn't hear, they would have killed her, and she knows that, because the, the, he, she's coming to bring a false god to them. Right. So she, they would. She's putting Jesus on their kids. Yes, yeah. and she would, and she would have died, and she knows that. So she goes there, she, all of them here, the entire village gets saved. They turn the Muslim mosques, which were several in this, in this big village, they turn the, the, the mosque into churches and the entire village got saved. <laughs> That's the authority. Mm. Follow me, follow me. You see, that's what this is about. This is about that kind of conversation in your life. You're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to be out there praying for people, using the authority of God that he gives you. Follow me, which means come after me, not just come be my, he didn't say come be my servant, even though we are bond servants of Christ. He said, follow me, come and be a part of what I'm doing. And then, you know, Billy always says this, and it says in, 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 in uh, Mark, he always says, well, and we're supposed to do greater things than he did. Yeah. Follow me. That's a, that's a call to us today in our world that is so messed up. Follow me. So will you say yes to Christ? That's really, I mean, that's what this is all about. 
That's, that's the calling of, 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 of Matthew. Jesus says to Matthew, hey, will you give up? Will you give up stealing from people? <laughs> will you give up taking advantage of people? Will you give up all of that and come and do what I... And, 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 he, and he, look, Matthew has no idea what this means. Matthew doesn't know what he's going to do. Matthew doesn't know where he's going to end up at this point. He just knows it's going to happen. And, and there's something about the authority of Christ. When it calls, you yes. have to say yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you could say no, but I'm telling you, don't miss it. Don't miss it. God's got something. Don't miss this. Don't miss this yeah, in your life. No. Yeah, yeah. Didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, tell us about that. Well, no, I'm, I'm just I'm going back in my mind. Like, did I say no? I, I was being called, I guess, by people, but... But God, you know, God had his way. If he, if he creates you, he knows how to reach you, you know? Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, he does. So if you, yeah. it, it, when, when you have people tell you that um, it's not, this Jesus thing's not working for me, it's like, come on. Yeah. It, it's the wrong Jesus you're looking at. There's something yeah. you're doing that's wrong. Right. Because right. It, it totally works. Do, do we want to finish this? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Well, and he's, sitting in a, he's sitting with many tax collectors and sinners. Yeah. So tax collectors are sinners, but... So they're eating with sinners, whatever sinners are. And they said, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And that's something that, that's, that's a question that we should answer today. We've got a few minutes to do that, right? Um, so, so it was, it, this must have been a huge spectacle. This must have been a, a, a commotion, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because how, in, how else were the Pharisees going to see what's going on? Right. I mean, there must have been... This must have been a big deal. It, it, it must. Well, maybe Matthew went back to get his suitcase or, or something and brought Jesus, and he sat down. And well, Jesus had a crowd of wherever he went. Right, right. So there's a crowd. He says to Matthew, "Get out of." And he says to the people that the, he says to the person that the people hate, "Come on out." Yeah, you're following me. You're. You, in I'm, fact, I in, choose you. <laughs> in the uh, chosen, Matthew's the last one chosen, and Peter's already one of the guys. And Peter says to Jesus, do you know who that is? And he goes, tell me, who is it? And he goes, he's, uh, he's, get, he's, he's strange or something. Yeah, and yeah. Jesus says, get used to strange. Yeah, yeah. And so Jesus doesn't even, he just misses it. But Peter's trying to warn Jesus, um, don't pick that guy. Yeah. And yeah. that's not in the Bible, but, you know. Well, but that's, that's really logical if you think about it because yeah. of who, who Matthew was, right? Yeah, the Pharisees are going to pick, if, 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 by the way, if Jesus had picked Pharisees, 12 Pharisees, oh. uh, it would have been awful. <laughs> but it would have been great for them. They would have said, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. No, 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 you're right. But they wouldn't have uh, criticized him. Well, you're right. If he would have come in and, and just said, okay, I want to I do, do the established thing. If he chose the Dalai the Lama yeah. and the Pope and yeah, yeah. Buddha, you know, and all that. He didn't do that. Yeah. He chose a tax collector. He chose the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. the nasty. Like us. Yeah, yeah. Because he, what is he doing here? First of all, he knew that, Peter, that Matthew would follow him. He knew that Matthew was looking for something, you know, and, and, and we all are. We're all looking for something. We just don't know what it is until we find Christ. And so here's Matthew. He's absolutely, he said, and he, it goes on to say, he told him, and excuse me, it says, I'll read this. It says, Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth, follow me, he told him. And Matthew, uh, Matthew got up and followed. So right away he just leaves and follows him while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. So they're already at Matthew's house. So something must have happened at Matthew's house. Watch this. Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. So they, th he called him. There wasn't a big commotion with that. They go to his house, and something must have happened at Matthew's house. Right? Because watch what it says. When the Pharisees saw this. So the Pharisees, maybe... Somebody went and told the Pharisees, hey, man, Jesus is at Matthew's house, and he's at, he's at a tax collector's house. And so maybe somebody ran and told the Pharisees, and they came. I don't well, know. We, if you ever did a study on, because when Jesus, uh, after his resurrection, uh, fried the fish and blessed oh, it, yeah, they yeah, said, yeah, yeah. oh, it's Jesus. Yeah. There's something about eating, and we have communion, right. that we have a Savior, and we have a God who wants to. The, the most intimate thing you can do in the ancient world, Middle East, whatever, is eat with somebody. Yeah, right, you don't just invite somebody. anybody to your table. Yeah. You sit down, you wash the feet. And you eat it. It's it's not like sex, but it's a little. I mean, it's close to because it, so he's actually 
They say, you're eating with a tax collector. Right, it's right, one thing right. to call him and walk, talk to him or whatever. You're sitting and eating with sinners. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and that, that, they considered that very, very bad, very adulterous or something. Something was going on. But anyway, somebody went somehow and got some Pharisees and brought him to Matthew's sure, house. Sure. So, so we know that. So, so when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples because they were at Matthew's house. Mm -hmm. So if they're at Matthew's house, somebody had to go tell the Pharisees this is going on. And they, for some reason, they thought it was important to go figure it out, to go see what's going on. So somehow they did that. Why does your teacher, and so this is what they say, why does your teacher, so they're not asking Jesus. No. That's interesting to me, that they don't approach Jesus. And maybe Judas went and told the Pharisees. Yeah, you know, he was, well, He's you, got a history. you've got a history with Judas, right? Mm -hmm. So why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? So they were close enough to Jesus. It's like, it's like this, when we want somebody to know something, but we're too chicken to go tell them ourselves. Yeah. We talk about it loud enough so they could hear, right? Because right? we're too afraid. We're, we're not, we don't have the whatever it takes to go in, in, mm -hmm. in the courage to go and, 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 you know, figure this out with them. So anyway, they, they, they're just on the side asking a question. On hearing this, Jesus said, uh, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Boy, what an amazing conversation. Jesus is so brilliant <laughs> but go and learn what this means so he addresses their question but he doesn't address their question by giving them this long answer he just says look sick people need a doctor and they all knew that Matthew was sick they all knew that the, that the tax collectors were all sick and sinners and sinners. They knew that they had a problem. They, they knew. So what Jesus says, look, I'm going to people who have problems. That's what he's saying. If you got a problem, come to me. That's what he's saying. So then he goes on, says, but go and learn what this means. So he answers their question, but he gives them something that they need to contemplate so that they can understand who Jesus is. Now watch what he asks. He says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So what does that mean? That, look, if you're a sinner, you're in a great place. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus came to call you, right? If you're a sinner, you're in a really good place. So for people to say, oh, I'm not a sinner, that's a bad thing. Or to come to church and say, I'm okay, I'm right. You know, I mean, yeah. that's self-righteous. Right, right. And you know, the song we sing, which I don't like the way it's worded, is my one request, my righteousness, it's yeah. his righteousness. Yeah. I know it reads that, well, you know, right, I, have, right. I have no righteousness of my yeah. own. Right. We, we are clothed with his righteousness, yes. therefore it becomes ours at that point, but it's not from me. It doesn't yeah. come anywhere from me. The Bi and again, in the Bible in the Old Testament says our righteousness is his filthy, filthy rags. So yeah, it, it is. So, so what is he saying? He says, I just, go study this question, he says to these very learned, very smart, they're not stupid, Pharisees aren't stupid, no. they're just religious. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very wise, in, in their religion they're wise, in their, in their in very intellectual, they're the, they're the cream of the crop, that they are, they, the people who become the Pharisees are the, are the people who know how to read and write and yeah, all they're, that. They're the, the top the, of the class. They are, they are the valedictorians, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They're the salutatorians, they're the top of the class, right? Good, good way. And he says, in your studies, study this. He says, he says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Well, what was, what was their whole religion built on? Sacrifice. Yes. Ceremony. Their whole life was built on sacrifice. You must bring us these lambs. You must bring us these doves. You must bring us this sacrifice. And we have to burn it on the altar. And we have to go through this whole thing. And we have to the Old Testament sacrifice. You must bring that to me, to us. And we're the only ones that are holy enough to offer that to God. You can't offer that to God. And so what he's saying is he's saying, your mercy, your solution to the problem is this, sacrifice. What you don't understand is that I want you to be merciful. That's what I came for. And what that tells us about God is that God is merciful. And, and I know we can use all kinds of words to, de to, f to define mercy. And I know that my definition of mercy is not, is not traditional. I get that. But mercy for me is God's solution to my problem. 
And I think that's what he's telling the Pharisees. I believe what he's saying to the Pharisees is this. Listen, listen. You want people to come and sacrifice and honor you and bow down to you and think you're great and da-da-da-da-da. You want to be the cream of the crop. You want to be respected for who you are. You want to have all these religious rules and you want to tell everybody that you follow them all. And, and, and you want to pray in the street corner. Remember, they've already been yes. in trouble for that. You want to pray on the street corner and, and cry out loud, look at me, look at me. You want, you want to give to the poor. Remember, we've ta we talked Ring about that. And you, you want to fast and, and look horrible because yeah, you're fasting. Yeah, you want to do all that. So he's already... He's already made all those conversations already from what we studied. So, so what he's saying to them is, what I want is I want you to give people God's solution. And you're not. So, so what he's doing is he's defining what a priest, a Pharisee, should, should be. Should be. Give people the solution of God. The scriptures, it's out of Hosea 6.6, 6, yeah. so I'll just read you it, because this is, he's quoting, Jesus is mm -hmm. quoting himself from Hosea 6.6, 6, um, says, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. So there you go, it's the same thing. I want you to give people God, the knowledge mm -hmm. of God. See, so it's the same conversation as in Hosea. So that's uh, that's that's perfect. Thank you. See, I told you the. Well, there was a. He, he, that's there's two parts of that scripture. Right, I just right. wanted to read the second part. Right, right. But uh, that we said earlier that the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Yes. Well, that tells you what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's talking about their responsibility is not to show everybody that they can <clears throat> follow the rule. They're supposed to walk their talk, but that's not their primary purpose. Their purpose is to help them to find God's solution to their problem. That's their purpose. And they weren't. That wasn't their job. They, they had forgotten what they were supposed to do. And when, when some of the Pharisees heard this, like Nicodemus, it was Nicodemus a Pharisee? Or, I mean, yes. Yeah. When some of the Pharisees, like Nicodemus, heard this, they were so afraid to be questioned by the other Pharisees, they, they came in secret. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, while they were coming in secret, they believed because they knew in their heart what they were supposed to be doing and they knew they weren't doing it. Yeah, the Jews had become very yeah. ceremonial. Yeah. And yeah. for us today... Um, we can get in the same problem. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We, you know, I just always use the thing about, should I tell my wife, I love you, love you, love you, and mean nothing about it. That's a right. ceremony, it's a ritual. Right. Or actually love her. Right. You know, which is more important, the wedding day, which is a ritual and a ceremony, or how you live out your marriage. And God always knew this. He gave them ceremonies, but they were using the ceremonies to, in place of God. They were, the, they were an end in themselves. The yes, ceremonies were an end in themselves. Yes, That's exactly. where they, they, they lived for the ceremony instead of living for God. So that's he's, what, he's refocusing them. Yeah, he's refocusing them. Now, we've seen him refocus people before, right? Where did we see that? Blessed. Because this is one of your both ends. He says, I deserve yes. not sacrifice. You're still supposed to sacrifice. Right, and right. you're still supposed to give to God what, God, what is God's. Right. But stop judging people um, who are tax collectors and sinners. Right. I want you to go back to what you're supposed to be doing, it, which is blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. So that, what's, that do, what's that call for us? And we have to go because we're at past time. What's the call for us? The call for us is to go back to our first love. Didn't Jesus say that? It's the same thing. And when he calls you, make sure your answer is yes. Because it, when it is, man, you never know what God's going to do through you. You know, I've just got one quick thing here. Yeah. What we do as Christians, and I've done this, so I'll say me, is we say, I've got it from here, God. Mm -hmm. I've never got it from here, God. Like, okay, yeah, this is don't. it. Here's your sacrifices. Here's what you do. Here's how you do it. It's like, you know, I'm not a mechanic fixing a car. Right. I read a, Anne Graham Lotz is... Yeah. is uh, Billy Graham's that? daughter. Okay, and she said, she was going around the world teaching everybody about Jesus, teaching everybody, but herself, she was did not have a relationship with God. And right. he called her on that and said, you're telling everybody about me, but where are you with me? Right, right. So that's, these Pharisees, they're not bad people. They were telling everybody what God told them to tell them, but they were missing their own relationship because they would have never missed Jesus <coughs> if they, right? And, right? and I'm sure that's tough for a pastor too because right, right. you're poured out to all these people and then you have to, you, you, need, you need your time with Christ. right. right. So I, I think I don't think he's he's criticizing the Pharisees, but he he still wants sacrifice. I think what he's doing is refocusing. Refocusing. Them. He's, yeah, okay. he's trying. He's he's saying what you're doing is 
you've gotten off. You've gotten it's off. It's empty. Yeah, you got off track. Get back on the track. Yes. He's because this is what Jesus knows. If they will concentrate on on mercy, and they will concentrate on God's knowledge, God's solution, like we read earlier, God's solution to our problem, and they will concentrate on that. That will lead them to Him. He's inviting him to sit at the yeah, table with yeah, Matthew. Yeah, Have a seat. Yeah, but yeah. They're not going to. Yeah, yeah. So, so they keep saying, this is what they do. They keep saying, we'd rather have sacrifice. The same thing, the same thing that we said on Sunday were the saddest, some of the saddest words in the Bible. Probably. After, yeah. after yeah. the demons were we'd cast out, have our darkness. go away. Don't be here. Leave our region. Go away. Uh, and, and God gives you that choice. God gives you that choice. Well, listen, you're his favorite. So are you, Billy. So am I. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.